Hello my friends and welcome to a continuation of my Exposed series on Jehovah's Witnesses. As I always say, thank you very much for your love and support, good humour and uh, most of all your encouraging words as we together go on this journey of truth-telling. I'd like to focus in on the Governing Bodies series called Truth Transforms Lives. Now this can be found on jw.org and I suggest that you have a look at it. It is a series of redemption stories that Watchtowers put together. Now last week I looked at fellow Australian and uh, Queenslander Andrew Hunter. I know his family and we discussed his turnaround story. But today we're going to focus on an American, and that is Canon Bernaldi. Now, Canon Bernaldi now is a circuit overseer, which means somebody that certainly has great responsibility within the organizational structure of Jehovah's Witnesses looking after and shepherding others uh, within the uh, congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, Canon Bernaldi starts off telling us that he was raised as a Jehovah's Witness and by a strong Jehovah's Witness family. And they had set and helped him to set spiritual goals. He was, uh, according to him, in his teens, um, a regular participant in the door-to-door -door ministry. But he finds himself in difficulty. He tells us that he was living a double life, and then that double life, through bad association with people, within the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses, led him to the fateful decision to leave home. He then says that he, with no restraints, was and nothing holding him back, was able to go into the world 100%. So what does Cannon do with this, uh, with the brakes taken off and choice being in his court? He becomes a drug addict, alcoholic, lives a promiscuous life, can't even pay his rent, is evicted, loses his job, loses his license, and he can't even afford a shirt, but really just the jeans and the t-shirt that he owns. And then he returns to the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses and then is rehabilitated by the elders and brought into a fine standing within the organisation and he's never been happier. This story almost beggars belief. I want us to ask some critical questions. He was raised as a Jehovah's Witness and apparently watched his parents' role model, as role models, I should say. Some basic questions that one would ask is, did he see his parents ever go to work? Did he know if his parents ever had a budget? Did he know whether they ever made a shopping list? Did he know how bills were paid? Did he have any idea that drugs and alcohol were not a healthy choice? Did he actually see non-Jehovah's Witnesses holding down jobs, looking after their families, looking after their health, not being promiscuous, being able to keep their apartments, keep their jobs, and actually have never lost their driver's license? Did Cannon ever see any of that? Apparently not. Cannon in no way fully accepts the choices that he made. No, he wishes to blame fellow Jehovah's Witnesses, yes, fellow Jehovah's Witnesses in his congregation that were apparently leading a double life. His own actions while living a double life seem to be not his own problems, but fellow friends of his that weren't Jehovah's Witnesses. He said that when he went into the world, that all people wanted to do was effectively be drug addicts and alcoholics. 
This is a disturbing caricature that is nothing short of fanciful. Cannon made diabolical decisions. When you move out of home, and apparently you are an adult, you understand that balance and equilibrium is paramount. Whether you partake in alcohol or drugs, or sleep with people that aren't your marriage partner, most people, actually the overwhelming majority of people on the planet, are able to get the equilibrium right. And for those that can't, they're called addicts. They're people that are broken and need an intervention. In actual fact, more people that are than more people, I should say, that are not Jehovah's Witnesses are engaged in an outreach to help people just like Canon to get over drugs, alcohol, budget their money, keep their jobs, and keep their license. You see, it's very easy to blame going 100% into the world for our own choices. But most important for those of us that are Christian, he says this most almost blasphemous thing. He gave this he gave this example. He said he understood that he needed discipline from the elders. Yes, he certainly needed correction because he was heading on the road of self-destruction. But this is what he said. He said, the same as when you break an arm, you go to a doctor who fixes you. He knew that the elders were spiritual doctors that would be able to fix him. Cannon needed fixing. And while he says that he has returned to Jehovah and that he has had blessings beyond what he could imagine, the same as all of the videos in this series, yes, there is not one single word about Jesus Christ. You see, what Cannon has done is he has simply institutionalized himself. You see, as a Christian, we know that no human can fix us. That is something that a relationship with Jesus Christ is capable of doing. And for those of my friends that are not believers, they also understand that we are ultimately responsible for our own actions and other people can't fix us. This is a tale of complete dereliction of personal responsibility. A scared young man that was not able to even have the basic nuance of looking after himself. I asked this question. What did his parents teach him? I told this experience and we were discussing this as a group of friends. One of my friends gave the example that Jehovah's Witnesses are so tightly wound and so sheltered from reality that when they are without parental supervision or organizational supervision, that they, like a spring, fly in every direction without boundaries. You see, our society, whether that of a religious society or a secular society, has boundaries. What Cannon demonstrated is that his complete inability to self-regulate self nearly cost him his life. This is not a boon for those who wish to get involved with Jehovah's Witnesses as the panacea to their problems, but rather it is a sterling example of what it means not to be able to govern oneself. The fact is this, that this is not a turnaround story that any Christian will want to look at. Christians, or anybody for that matter, don't need to be fixed. They need to realize what we have done to ourselves, our loved ones, and our community. And only by taking full responsibility for ourselves can we possibly understand and be awake to what is possible. 
No, Cannon's example is a dereliction of responsibility. It was another young people in the congregation that led him on the road to destruction. It wasn't his 100% worldly friends that led him on the road of drug addiction, alcohol and a promiscuous lifestyle. That was him. This to me is one of the most disturbing aspects of the Jehovah's Witness story. It's everybody else's fault. It's never the individual's responsibility. They deliberately paint those that are not Jehovah's Witnesses in the worst possible light. In actual fact, our society would not be able to function at all. We wouldn't have doctors, lawyers, police, the armed forces, educators, psychologists, psychiatrists, teachers, builders, and so forth, if in fact we were those kind of people 100% in the world. It doesn't exist. It's a fantasy of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. As I said, I encourage you, have a look at these videos. Make a decision for yourself. If you are a Christian like me, I would love to hear what you think of these videos and the absolute absence of any mention of Jesus Christ. And these people were handpicked by Jesus Christ invisibly in 1918 to represent him. And the governing body in New York are the last remaining ones of Jesus' brothers. Then why are you producing videos in which you cannot even say his name? And for those who hold a secular viewpoint, I'd love to hear your opinion. What you think rights and responsibilities look like. Thank you very much. I'm Matt Christopher, and I hope this has been thought-provoking. Thank you very much.